Good day, everyone. How are you doing? Um, my name is David, and I am representing New Jersey ACAC today for this uh, session. And we're joined by uh, three fantastic universities. Um, but a few things on housekeeping before we continue. Um, all of the uh, sessions will be recorded, so they'll be provided after this session. So if you want to get a copy of the recording, it will be there. In addition to that, we're encouraging all students to sign up for more sessions um, through New Jersey, through njacac.org. Um, in addition to that, your camera and your microphone will be off today. Um, the panelists can't hear or see you. Um, and if you've used Zoom before, you know there's a chat and a Q&A function. Today, we are only using the Q&A function. The chat has been disabled. So any questions you have for any of these fantastic universities, please put them in the Q&A. And I am going to turn it over to our wonderful panelists. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's great uh, to see you all virtually today. Uh, this panel is designed uh, to share important questions. Uh, we feel students should be asking as you continue to explore uh, large Division I universities. Next slide, please. Oh. Uh, so the, my name is Chris Paul. Uh, I am the Eastern uh, Pennsylvania and Central New Jersey Regional Admissions Recruiter for the University of Alabama. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Warwick. I am the Regional Admissions Representative for the University of South Carolina. Um, I am in Philadelphia full-time and cover all of Eastern Pennsylvania and Southern New Jersey. Hi everyone, my name is Cassandra Smith. I'm from West Virginia University, Morgantown. I am located in Monmouth County and I cover Monmouth County through Maine. So what could you tell me about the area? Location, location, location. Understanding where your prospective college is and what the surrounding area is like is an important question to ask. The University of Alabama is located in Tuscaloosa, which is in southern central Alabama. Tuscaloosa is a medium-sized city offering entertainment, cultural, and active, outdoor activities thanks to the Black Warrior River that runs through Tuscaloosa. It also serves as an extension of the campus thanks to the partnerships we formed with the community. The University of South Carolina is located in the state capital city of Columbia, South Carolina. We are right smack dab in the center of the state, located about an hour and a half from the beach and an hour and a half from the mountains. I know how close you are to the shore is very important to some New Jersey folks. Um, so we are in a mid-sized city. It's nothing like something you're more familiar with, maybe with Philadelphia or New York. Uh, we're only about 600,000 population in the city of Columbia and our campus is 27,000 undergraduate students. Um, and we are a breezy nine to 10 hour drive from pretty much anywhere in the state of New Jersey. Hop right on 95 and go straight all the way down to I-20 and go left, or excuse me, go west for an hour and then you're at Columbia. All right, and West Virginia Morgan, uh, West, oh, sorry, WV in Morgantown is located in Morgantown, West Virginia. I've said that a million times in my life. We are a large suburban campus. We have 21,000 undergrad and 27,000 total students. The city of Morgantown is about 30,000. So we make up, um, we're just as even with the students, I'm sorry, the individuals who live there. Downtown Morgantown is a true college town with lots of places to go and eat, listen to live music, um, places to shop, and we are six hours from Central Jersey. Another question you might want to ask your admissions counselors for large enrollment division one institutions is what kind of students attend your university? Um, and the good news is that you are never put into a box at a large school like any of our three. At the University of Alabama, we have a lot of different degrees that students can pursue. We have a total of 70 undergraduate majors. And then with the minor options, there are about 200 degree possibilities. Uh, we are especially proud of our 221 freshman National Merit Scholarship recipients who enrolled in 2020. Um, there are a total of 800 National Merit Scholarship recipients on campus. 
at the University of South Carolina, you can see that we are a majority in-state students with 44% out-of-state population with representation from all 50 states and over 100 different countries. Uh, so you really are getting a global experience on our campus in Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and also just to clarify that URM acronym stands for underrepresented minority. Uh, we do boast a 22% URM population on our campus as well. Um, while we do have over 100 different majors, you'll see some of our most popular majors listed right there um, that are highly populated at USC uh, that you might see most commonly on our campus. At WVU, we have a 46% in-state and 54% out-of-state population. This just jumped up this year, which was quite surprising to us. We have students from all 50 states and all 55 counties in, w in West Virginia. We also have students from 100 different countries that make up about 2,300 um, international students. We have a 13% URM population. Some of the majors that are really popular at our school include art and science, health professionals such as pre-majors for medical school, uh, physical therapy, dentistry, and pharmacy. We also have a business program and exploratory program that's very popular. And towards the bottom, you'll see that we're also a land-grant facility that offers a number of scholars. All right, so you might ask yours, um, you might also be interested in uh, Honors College. So do you have an Honors College at your university? Uh, the University of Alabama does have an Honors College. Uh, the way that you apply for the, the Honors College is first you need to be admitted as an undergraduate to the university. Uh, then admitted students will be able to apply online. Uh, the criteria uh, and requirements for incoming first year students uh, would be a 3.5 or higher cumulative GPA. Um, for test scores, we are hoping you will have a 30 ACT or a 1360 SAT. Um, students who do not get accepted into honors initially or who do not apply will also have the option to apply as current students. Once you complete 12 semester hours, which is essentially after your first semester, uh, you can apply. The requirement then is a 3.5 or higher cumulative GPA earned specifically at Alabama. The University of South Carolina is proud to have the number one public honors college in the United States since 2012. Um, so part of that uh, number one ranking really does stem from our smaller class sizes, our more specific course curriculum uh, that extends beyond the general education classes that uh, the rest of the student body might take um, in the small campus community within the larger uh, the larger university. So if you're looking for a school that has a large campus, you know, division one, um, large enrollment, all the sports, everything you're looking for in a larger school, but also that small classroom atmosphere and honors college might be a great fit for you. Um, our honors college students also have direct access, or excuse me, primary access for direct entry to our nursing program upper division and international business upper division. Um, so again, if you're looking into one of those programs, we are able to offer direct entry for those for honors college students. We do have an additional application that students need to fill out in order to be um, considered for the honors college. That application supplement is due November 15th. You will only get access to it after applying to general admission for the University of South Carolina. Um, and that supplemental application consists of two letters of recommendation and two additional essays along with one short answer question. Um, again, that deadline is November 15th. We'll talk about deadlines in a little bit, but just to give you an idea of what our honors college is like. And at WVU, we also have an honors program. It is a two-year program that everyone is reviewed for when they apply to our school. They offer benefits such as priority course registration, specific courses that are only for honors students, research opportunities, and our Honor Excel R1 research. So you do not have to apply to it. However, they will send you a letter of invitation and they will ask that you write back a 250 word um, letter of interest. Right now it is a merit-based program and we are working on the test optional requirements which will be released very soon. Another great question to ask is what is student life like and how can you get involved? Um, your college experience does not end in the classroom. Campus life is vital to your overall college experience, happiness, personal growth, and experiential learning opportunities. At the University of Alabama, we are the largest Greek life system in the country. 
With that, it is only a little over 11,000 undergraduates participating in Greek life, uh, which is 30% of the population. Um, so if you don't want to do Greek life, uh, there are tons of ways for you to get involved separate of that. 70% of our students do not participate in Greek life. We have over 600 student organizations, uh, which are a great way for you to explore your personal interest and to build your own community. Um, some of the traditions on campus include the Crimson Tide. Um, the name Crimson Tide came from our 1907 uh, football game against Auburn. Our white jerseys were dyed by the red mud. Um, another great tradition on campus is Big Al the Elephant. Uh, the elephant came about in 1930 when our varsity players entered the field and sounded like a herd of elephants when they came into the stadium. The name Big Al is named after a local popular radio DJ. Um, also in the middle of our quad, we have our Demi Chimes. Those were built in 1929 in honor of our former president, Dr. George Denny. When students ask me uh, what student life is like at South Carolina um, and what our student body is like, um, I love to use the words passionate and involved um, for similar reasons, but um, we do have over 500 student organizations at the University of South Carolina. So whatever it is you want to get involved in outside of the classroom, whether it's community service, sustainability, professional organizations, uh, political engagement groups, activism groups, whatever it is, we have it at South Carolina. And if we're still missing something that you're really passionate about and you want to get involved in, you can make your own group of um, a, your own club or organization with a group of five students and a faculty advisor. Um, we have over 1200 student study abroad programs for students to take advantage of. These are open to all students at USC. Um, you just have to be in good academic standing. Um, so no matter where you want to go in order to get that global experience out in the world off of our campus, we can make that happen for you. Um, and also just to expand on a couple of campus traditions you'll see down there. Uh, my personal favorite is Chicken Finger Wednesday, which is exactly what it sounds like. Every Wednesday at the Student Union, we do have chicken fingers and we serve curly fries, um, which are a big hit with our student body. Um, and one of our student organizations called Sustainable Carolina actually takes the leftover grease from Chicken Finger Wednesdays um, and they turn them into soap bars uh, for our students to sell in, at the farmer's market for our campus um, locally. Also, Tiger Burn is um, a very, very cherished campus tradition that we have every single year uh, where our engineering students build a giant paper mache tiger, uh, think like 30, 40 feet tall, and then we burn it to the ground in preparation for our rivalry football game against Clemson University each fall. And at WVU, we have over 485 student organizations. So as you can see, when you attend a big school, there's a lot of opportunities to meet students at um, share an interest or share an activity that you enjoy participating in. We offer 10% of these programs are going to be Greek life. For study abroad, we have our Office of Global Affairs and they will help you travel to a variety of different countries. Right now we have about 50 different countries. Depending on your major, they may be a preset country that's selected that's going to offer you a great experience or internship. Um, when it comes to traditions, we do our Mountaineer Week. During the Mountaineer Week, we celebrate all things West Virginia through music, crafts, events, competitions, and things like that. Our pepperoni roll is our signature snack and something you should definitely try when you get down there to visit. We also do something called our PRT Cram, which is our PRT is our monorail system, which we use to get around campus. And each year we see how many students can fit into one cart. Um, the record was made in 2000, so it's been quite a long time since we've broken the record. And of course, John Denver's Country Road is a song that all Mountaineers and alumni members know by heart, inside and out. When it comes to other things that students can do on campus, our Adventure West Virginia is a large way for students to get involved and it brings them opportunities like hiking, camping, canoeing, mountain biking, skiing, and snowboarding. There's numerous opportunities within the mountains that surround WVU um, and then into Ohio and Pennsylvania as well. We also do a number of student events and activities throughout the semester to help students find things to do on campus. So a major question that students might be asking themselves as they're looking at large enrollment institutions is how personal will my college experience be? And the fact of the matter is that you'll be surprised how many classes you have of 20 or 30 students or even fewer. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to, to make that college experience a lot more personal than you think it might be possible. 
At the University of Alabama, our student teacher, teacher ratio is 23 to one. Uh, our faculty are very generous with their time and will do anything they can to connect with their students. Uh, they keep open office hours. And I've also heard from students that if uh, they are not available when faculty is available, the faculty will come up with other times uh, and, and go out of their way to make sure that student is able to meet that connection. Uh, we also have intramural sports leagues, which are informal uh, sports leagues uh, where students compete. Um, what's really cool is a lot of our faculty also participate in intramural leagues. So it creates a unique opportunity for students to form friendships with their faculty outside of the classroom. We are also an R1 research university and do offer undergraduate research opportunities. This is an excellent way, even if you're not planning on going into a research heavy profession to uh, get involved and make a connection with your faculty. Ultimately, those students are working as research assistants for our faculty. In some cases, those are paid experiences. Uh, it's an opportunity to get published as an undergrad and also uh, work with the faculty, which will hopefully lead to great recommendations either for your career or for your graduate school applications. At USC, students might be surprised to see that our students to faculty ratio is 17 to one. And that is because we really do prioritize, get, prioritize students getting that small classroom environment um, at our large institution whenever possible. Now that's not to say that you're not gonna have classes of 200 students. It's definitely a possibility at South Carolina. Um, it's definitely a likelihood, but it's only going to be a couple of classes, maybe four or five out of your total four years as the Gamecock. Um, we also are really proud to have the number one first year experience at USC and part of this is through our University 101 programming. It's a first year seminar course that all students are encouraged to take. Some students are required depending on what population they fit into. Um, and it's basically just a first year seminar course to teach you how to be a successful college student at USC. Um, it's a really great way to get to know your peers in a smaller classroom environment and to get engaged with a um, upperclassman leadership student at USC and a staff member or faculty member at USC. Also keep in mind that no matter where you end up after graduation, we do have over 300,000 living alumni in the country in every single state. So no matter where you go, there will be Gamecocks there to welcome you with open arms. And at WVU, we have a 21 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Same as what Allie was just saying, you will have some classes that are large and some of the classes will be, they will get smaller as you progress through your major. Some of the campus resources on our campus that we are really proud of are our wellness initiatives. We have a Carew Center and a Well WVU to help students with all things, whether it's sleep management, uh, food, nutrition, stress management, any form of mental health that we can help you with. We also have writing labs, math labs, a career center, numerous tutoring opportunities, and libraries to help you to be the best student that you can be. When it comes to experiential learning, we're really proud of the internships and co-ops that all the different departments on campus are able to offer their students, plus a number of jobs um, and internships, and then um, positions on our farm, which is right off of campus for students to get involved in and learn as they grow and um, take classes. So, when it comes to being at a large school, what opportunities for student success are available at, different, at these different universities? At the University of Alabama, we are very committed to student success. Uh, this is going to translate in two ways. The first is with professional goals and uh, job placement after graduation. Uh, we are recently ranked by the Princeton Review as the number two college in the country for internship opportunities. We are also the number one SEC conference uh, university for internships. Um, our internships are not just going to be limited to in Tuscaloosa or in Alabama, uh, even the South. We have national internship opportunities and in some cases international opportunities. Um, they're also not going to be just during the fall and spring semester. Uh, we encourage our students to take advantage of the three summers that you have uh, during your undergraduate career. So if you're looking for opportunities during the summer, we will help you get placement um, either in Alabama or if you wanna come back to New Jersey, we'll help you work in New York City or all over the country. Uh, we also do have for engineering and uh, limited for business, we do have a co-op program. Uh, this is a full year of paid employment uh, embedded into your undergraduate studies. Um, students coming out of the co-op are very successful getting jobs with the companies they work with since the company is already, uh, has experience uh, with that student as an employee. Um, we also have uh, accelerated master's programs uh, in terms of the commitment to your education. Um, the accelerated master's programs uh, 
are available for most programs, um, including our engineering. Um, we also do have, through the College of Arts and Science, a STEM and a Creative Pathway to an MBA. So what this means is students with a STEM major or a Creative major or really under, any undergraduate major on campus, um, if they're high achieving, will uh, be able to start concurrently earning credits at the end of junior year towards your bachelor's uh, and also your MBA. Um, that program will be completed in five. Um, also, all of our alumni uh, or legends will have lifetime access to career services after graduation, uh, which I think is really amazing. If you're ever changing jobs, if you're ever looking for new opportunities, Alabama will remain committed to you for your lifetime. Thanks, Chris. So at USC, um, we do also require most majors to complete at least one internship by the time they graduate. Some majors even require two just to really ensure that they're getting that hands-on experience um, to help them out in the, in the job search process after graduation. Um, so the majors that don't require an internship, of course, it's still going to be encouraged. Um, but those majors, maybe like the hard sciences, the STEM majors, they might really encourage our students to go through an undergraduate research project. I mean, even if it's that, if, if it's developing your own project um, and pursuing that passion of yours, um, it doesn't have to be major related, or you can just go and assist somebody else on a project that they're working on. Um, that way it can help broaden your horizons, contextualize your academic experience in the classroom to hands-on things outside of the classroom that may or may not be an internship experience. Uh, we do have a career center on campus. We actually have three. Uh, one is for the general student body, and then the other two are specific to the engineering students and to our business students. We have employers from all over the country and really all over the world looking for Gamecocks to hire upon graduation um, and for internships as well. Uh, just like Chris said with the University of Alabama, we do allow our students to go and pursue internships all over the globe. Um, even if that's what you want your study abroad excursion to be, that's a possibility um, as from being a Gamecock. Um, also keep in mind if you're looking to go pre-med, pre-law, pre-dental, pre-vet, anything like that, we do have an office of pre-professional advising to give you an additional advisor to help you through that process from the beginning of freshman year all the way up until graduation. And then our honors college students have special access to some three plus three or three plus four programs uh, through the College of Law and the College of Medicine through USC. Awesome, thanks Allie. At WVU, we have 7,000 jobs and internships available on campus for students to get involved in. This doesn't work opportunities for work study. When it comes to student services, we have our Office of Accessibility. So should you need any additional resources or help, you could certainly go there and they would work with you to determine what they can provide for you. This is um, additional to all of the tutoring and centers that are available throughout campus, like the writing and the math centers. For accelerated programs, we do have a number of three plus three programs for our law school. These could be through our Everly College of Art and Science. They could be through our John Chambers College of Business and Economics or the Reed College of Media. There's numerous opportunities depending on what kind of law you want to study. We also have a number of health science programs that include medical, dental, pharmacy, free programs that can get you from your undergrad all the way up to your doctorate. And then of course, engineering and our College of Physical Activity and Sports Science provide programs where you can get your master's. Another great question to ask is, what is housing like? Where you're going to live is important, especially if you are coming from out of state. Find out about both on-campus and off-campus housing opportunities. At the University of Alabama, freshmen are guaranteed and are required to live on campus. Most of our upperclassmen do live off campus in Tuscaloosa. A big advantage to that is there is a lot of valuable value living off campus. The average one bedroom is anywhere from 400 to 500 a month. Also students will pool together and rent larger houses or, or, or apartments, um, saving them a lot of money throughout their undergraduate career. The University of South Carolina is similar in that we do require uh, on-campus housing for our first year students and then after that most students do move off. Um, when you are living on campus, we do have 23 unique living and learning communities that range from major specific to interest specific or identity specific. Um, so some of the ones that I like to highlight are Green Quad, which is an apartment style residence hall for first year students that is focused entirely on sustainability. Uh, we also have a pre-health sciences uh, living and learning community. There's a women's quad, a men's community, 
all sorts of things. Um, you can see the whole list on our website if you're curious about learning more. Um, just to give you an idea of our honors college students are the only population that are given priority to stay on campus as upperclassmen and they can even live in um, the dorms that are on the horseshoe, which is our most historic part of campus, the original part of the city of Columbia and the University of South Carolina. It's actually also on the National Register of Historic Places. And at WV Morgantown, we have 12 residence halls that are on our downtown campus or our Evansdale area of campus. We have two apartment complexes. Within those resident halls, we have a number of live learning communities. These communities could be interest based, lifestyle based, or major based. Everything within our housing is a first come, first serve basis since we are rolling admission and our housing went live today, October 1st. Um, each, re each res hall has a different list of amenities um, associated with the location and where it is um, for students. So depending on your major, you may choose to live on one side of campus to be closer to classes, or you might choose to live closer to the rec center or things of your interest. A huge question that most students and families ask uh, when they're pursuing their college search is how can I how can I fund my education? What sort of scholarships are available to me? Um, and large division one institutions have quite a few options for you all. The University of Alabama, uh, we have a couple, a, a few uh, out-of-state merit scholarships for incoming first-year students. Uh, the first are our automatic scholarships. Uh, you will automatically receive a scholarship if you are accepted and have the GPA and test score requirements that are listed with the individual scholarships. Um, that information is available on our scholarship website. Uh, we also have our competitive scholarships. Competitive scholarships are academic merit scholarships, alumni scholarships, and special interest scholarships. Uh, they are smaller, uh, but when you apply, you have to be accepted to the university first, and then you will apply for competitive scholarships. It's a consolidated application, so it's one application for multiple scholarships, and you will be reviewed and considered for all those scholarships that you're eligible for, and we do have students who are receiving multiple competitive scholarships. We have also added this year our competitive academic scholarship. Uh, this is for students primarily who have not had an opportunity to take an SAT or an ACT. Uh, you would need to apply uh, for the competitive scholarship. The priority deadline for the competitive scholarships is January 15th. Um, students will be reviewed based on their weighted GPA. Uh, you will also need to submit an essay and a resume when you apply for competitive scholarships, so that will be a factor in the review. Even if you did submit a test score to the university, you will still will be considered for the competitive academic scholarship. So if you are a high achieving student and have not tested as well, uh, that is a great opportunity for you to get a scholarship. Uh, students will not receive the automatic scholarship and the competitive ac academic scholarship to, uh, combined. Um, you will be reviewed and will receive the scholarship that is most appropriate. Uh, we also do have current student scholarships. So once you complete a year at Alabama, you will be able to apply for additional merit scholarships. If you are coming to the campus with a scholarship, you are still eligible to apply for those additional scholarships. If you are coming to the campus without a scholarship, you will, uh, we encourage you to apply. Um, that is an excellent way that our students are gaining funding as they move forward at their career, uh, during their career at Alabama. At the University of South Carolina, all applicants, regardless of if they apply test optional or with test scores, are still going to be considered for merit scholarships this year. Um, so those merit scholarships are quite generous, especially to our out-of-state students. Um, about a third of our freshman class every year, both in-state and out-of-state total come in with, um, with some sort of merit scholarship offered from the University of South Carolina. If you're curious to see all of those different um, award levels and what it takes to achieve those award levels, you can definitely ch go check out our website um, and search uh, non-resident scholarships for uh, merit academic achievement. Um, we do also have departmental awards that students can apply for as they are continuing students. There are not very many open to incoming freshmen, unfortunately, but it's just another way to help funding uh, your education a little bit more feasible as you're continuing as a Gamecock. And at WVU, we do offer merit-based scholarships. We have a chart available on our financial aid website where you can see what your cumulative GPA would be. And then across the bottom, your ACT or SAT super score, wherever the two meet, we on our chart, it is color coded to let you know 
how much merit-based aid you're eligible for. We also just recently added a test optional based scholarship grid with your cumulative uh, wage GPA. You'll be able to see how much financial aid you're eligible for based on that. Additionally, we do have scholarships for some of our sophomore students and funding opportunities for internships and co-ops available through our financial aid department and the different departments that we have on campus. There is a diversity and a leadership scholarship that students can apply for. You'd have to go onto the financial aid website and apply for each one. They do have their own specific deadlines that you wanna check out early, even though we're rolling admissions, some of them have deadlines that are before the winter break. We definitely recommend looking into the scholarship opportunities sooner than later. And remember that the FAFSA goes live today, so you can actually fill that out, list the top 10 schools that you're interested in, and then we can assess and provide you with a package. Okay, so now you've learned all about our three great schools. I, as you can see, large schools offer a lot of different things for students, which is great for getting involved, learning, and then maximizing your undergrad experience. So the next big thing would be, how do I apply? So at the University of Alabama, uh, in the Tuscaloosa campus, you will only be able to apply off of the ua.edu website. Uh, we are rolling admissions. Um, and our activity, our, our admissions criteria is based on two things. Uh, the first is your cumulative GPA. So you will need your high school to submit your official high school transcript. Uh, the second part of our review is your official test score, either uh, an SAT or an ACT. Uh, we don't have a preference. Whatever test is better for you, we want you to uh, submit. Uh, we do not uh, have any need for essays or other supplemental material on our application. Um, there is no way to submit that, so don't be worried if you think uh, the application is very straightforward. Uh, for this year, we've also added conditional uh, admissions review. Uh, this is for students who have not had an opportunity to take the SAT or the ACT yet. Uh, what you would need to do on your application is indicate that you have not tested. Uh, we will then go forward with your review based on your uh, cumulative GPA. Um, students who have a 3.0 or higher GPA will be admitted conditionally uh, to reg uh, as regular admissions. Uh, students who have a 2.0 to a 2.99 will be conditionally admitted to our Crimson Edge program. Crimson Edge is an advising system that we have in place for students who we see potential in, uh, but also recognize that they might need some extra help to be successful. Um, that means you're going to be meeting with a dedicated advising team separate of your academic advisors. Uh, we have our freshman's experience class, uh, which is a course designed to give those students um, the necessary skills to be successful on campus. Uh, we also have dedicated resources such as tutoring and other academic resources available uh, specifically for Crimson Edge students. Um, you will be required to submit your test score. Students will have until May 1st, 2021 to submit a score. Uh, once we get your test score, we will do a final review. Um, for students who are admitted conditionally to regular admissions, uh, that test score should not have much uh, effect or bearing on your final review. Um, students who are admitted to Crimson Edge potentially will be readmitted as regular admission students if those test scores uh, are, uh, are higher. At USC, we do have three different ways for you to apply. Uh, we are on the Common App, the Coalition application, as well as our General University application on sc.edu slash apply. We do not have a preference for how you apply. We just invite you to do so, whichever way makes the most sense for you. They all come into our system exactly the same way. Uh, we do have two stated deadlines uh, for which have stated notification timelines as well. Um, for early action, the application deadline is October 15th. It's one of the earlier deadlines you might be seeing from college that you're interested in pursuing, um, but that is in a couple of weeks here. So if you're applying early action, um, we have a couple weeks to get that finished and submitted to us. If you're applying regular decision, that deadline is December 1st of 2020. Um, as long as you apply by December 1st, you are guaranteed consideration for admission to the university as well as merit scholarships. And at WVU, we also offer rolling admissions. We have started our decision-making process. We start reviewing in mid-September all the way through July um, when school begins the following August. We have our WVU application and the common application. Again, they both come in the same way, so you can apply on either one. It does not matter to us. With that being said, you can take the SAT or the ACT. It doesn't matter to us which test you prefer if you're applying with test scores. 
Um, we generally see about a four to six week turnaround once we have all of your materials and we will send you an email and a letter in the mail. So what about deadlines? Don't be late for that very important date. Deadlines impact your admissions decisions, scholarships, and other important parts of your college experience, like housing. Uh, at the University of Alabama, like I mentioned, we are rolling admissions. However, the priority application deadline is May 1st, uh, 2021. Uh, we also have our competitive scholarship deadline. Uh, the priority deadline is January 15th. Uh, if you want to be considered for scholarships, uh, we do recommend you apply so that you can be accepted and uh, apply and then complete that application by that deadline. Um, another important deadline is our priority housing deadline. Uh, that is February 1st. Um, any student who applies for housing before February 1st or on February 1st uh, will be given an online selection date in May uh, to pick your own housing. If you apply after February 1st, your housing assignment will be based on your preferences that you list when you apply for housing and also availability. Um, all students who apply for housing will be able to submit one roommate request. Uh, that roommate request will be considered in the assignment process. Um, also, our housing application officially opened today. Uh, so students who apply earliest for housing beginning in October will be assigned the first selection dates to, uh, to pick your own housing. Um, so if you want to live in the apartment style, suite style, uh, that is very popular. And I highly recommend uh, moving forward with your application so you can get admitted and apply for housing so you can get a priority selection. At USC, the only additional deadline uh, that I want you all to be aware of is that Honors College deadline of November 15th. As a reminder, to be considered for the Honors College, you have to apply to the General University first, and then qualified applicants will get access to the, honor, to the Honors College application supplement. Um, you will also need to be sure to submit the FAFSA by April 1st of your senior year. That FAFSA opens up today, and our priority deadline is not until April 1st of 2021. And at WVU, we have a few deadlines to take into consideration. Our direct admit nursing program has a priority deadline of December 1st. So if you are interested in nursing or any STEM heavy program, we do recommend that you apply sooner than later to guarantee a seat. Our scholarship deadline is May 1st. That means if you're admitted and you take your test again, ACT or SAT in the springtime, we need your scores on file by May 1st in order to reevaluate to see if we can provide you with any additional merit-based aid. Again, the department scholarships have earlier deadlines, especially the business school. They have a, um, a deadline in December. So if you're interested in any additional scholarshiping, it is always to your benefit to apply early to make sure you don't miss any of those deadlines. Again, the FAFSA priority deadline for us is March 1st. So at this point, you all are probably thinking, oh my gosh, this sounds incredible, where can I learn more? And fortunately for you all in the age of COVID, there's a lot of virtual programming that colleges are offering for our students on demand and at uh, various times throughout each week. So at the University of Alabama, we do have a lot of virtual options. Uh, we have a virtual campus tour, which is a 360 degree photography tour. Uh, the campus is uh, a little over a thousand acres, a uh, very large campus, um, but that tour will give you a really great view of everything to see uh, on, in Tuscaloosa. Um, we also do online daily information sessions. Uh, these are live sessions that are run by um, the Office of Undergraduate Admissions and also the different college partners. Uh, I highly recommend if you want to get information about the specific majors, uh, register for those. They are run by advisors uh, who provide great information. And at the end of those live sessions, there are also uh, a, a chat session. So if you have any specific questions, that's a really great way to get information about those different majors quickly. Uh, we also have a student question and answer. This is run by our capstone men and women who are student ambassadors who work uh, with the Office of Admissions. Um, I highly recommend these as well. Um, it, I think it's important that if you are potentially going to be a student uh, at the University of Alabama, uh, you need to get the student perspective. Um, so that is a great way for you to access that online. 
Um, our campus has been open since August. Uh, with that, we do have campus tours available Monday through Saturday. Uh, we do have social distancing and other uh, safety uh, restrictions in place. So space is limited. Uh, if you want to do a tour, especially this fall, I highly recommend making that arrangement uh, as soon as possible. Um, we also offer in-depth visits. Uh, those are expanded visit opportunities for you to do facility tours of the different college facilities to meet with the different advisors. We have a Greek village tour. Um, if there's anything you know that you specifically want to learn about the a university, um, we could uh, possibly add that to your visit opportunity. Um, I schedule all the in-depth visits, so if that's something that you're interested in, uh, please try to give me at least two weeks notice and I'll make those arrangements for you. Um, I do recommend though, if you are considering an in-depth visit this fall, to go ahead and uh, make those arrangements as, as soon as possible uh, so that you are able to, uh, so that we are able to accommodate you. Um, I also host on Tuesday and Wednesday night from six o'clock, to 8 p.m. I do a tied Zoom chat. Uh, this is a one-to-one -one half hour meeting. Um, this is a great opportunity for me to continue sharing information about the university and for you to get any questions answered. I also recommend um, and invite your family and, and your parents or guardians to participate in that session. For USC, we are also offering quite the plethora of virtual programming on our website. You can find everything at that landing page listed right there, apply.sc.edu slash visit. Uh, some of my personal favorites are a uh, virtual tour led by current student ambassadors at USC. Uh, we are also offering academic department information ses sessions. So if you'd like to hear specifically from the College of Business, Engineering, Hospitality, anything like that, you can hear directly from them on demand. Um, and then also we're doing general freshman information sessions if you'd like to learn more about the admissions process in depth. Uh, we are very quickly, I'm going to mention that we are able to offer modified and limited in-person campus tours right now. So if you want to make the trip down, we would be happy to have you. However, register as soon as possible so you can get on a tour um, before they fill up. And then finally, we have our virtual open house happening next week. So we'd love to have you go ahead on our website and you can sign up for that to learn about everything, all of the ins and outs of the University of South Carolina. And at WVU, you can visit our visitor center to learn more. Um, the website is on there. We have things like Tour Guide Live and our reopening information will be available on that website. They will also have information on Ask Us Anything, Go First Friday, and our Discover Day, which is the open house opportunity that we have coming up this month and again in November. So with that being said, we wanna thank you for attending. You can really tell that we're from New Jersey because we can talk very fast at the end when we know that we have two or three minutes to go. But we do encourage you to drop any questions that you might have into the Q&A now and we can address those for you. If you don't wanna drop them into the Q&A, that is totally fine. Please be sure to take a screenshot or a picture of the screen that you see right now. Reach out to us should you have any questions that you wanna ask on a one-on-one -on -one, um, situation. So thank you again for joining us and we really appreciate your time. All right, um, so before we let you go, if you haven't already left, um, we just want to thank you for joining us once again. Um, when you close out of this today, there will be a quick four, four question survey um, and then we are encouraging you to please take uh, please do that survey. In addition, sign up for additional sessions and just reminding you that the sessions are recorded. So if you miss something or you want to play something back, it will be available online at njacac.org backslash virtual fairs. Um, once again, thank you. And on behalf of NJACAC, have a wonderful day. <laughs>